Honda's teenage sensation Jet Lawrence is carving a dominating path through the 250 motocross campaign. The Australian star has won six of seven overall races and five straight motos. His next test comes today in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. 39 other 250 riders are heading to the start to try to chase down the Jet. The 250 racing from Washougal takes off right now. It's round number eight of the 2022 Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship, sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing, the Motosport.com Washougal National, presented by Peterson Cat. Hello, everyone. Jason Wigand here live on MAV TV, all season long being joined by a group of legends as our television analyst. And today, none other than Washington's own Ryan Villapoto, the nine time national champion. class well also with those three titles what have you seen this year well I've seen uh, a hunter and a Jets show so far but mm -hmm. uh, Justin Cooper with fast lap once again today uh, we're gonna have a battle on our hands and I'm looking forward to it and I hope you guys are too all right Ryan give us a tour of your home track at CMX versus ATV legends track map what's it look like out here well it's it's an awesome day you know coming right out of here out of, out of, from the finish line an iconic section here uh, the dirt's going to be prime today. We have overcast. That's an awesome triple right here in front of the fans. Uh, you know, the great high fly tabletops in the back there. This is coming up to mechanics area. So over all in all today with this overcast that we have, it's going to be a, a phenomenal. The dirt's going to be great. Um, they're not going to have to put a lot of water down. So it's going to be it's going to be a great uh, racing condition for them. And this place is absolutely packed when you get to the fences here. Absolutely, as we get ready. Oh, look at that old school. It's nice to still, still have some fans. Uh, every once in a while, they remember the uh, the legacy out here. That's awesome. All right, we're getting ready for our first moto of the day here live on Mav TV. Don't go anywhere. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil. Keep that engine alive. General Tire, for whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And by Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. Giving the GoPro course preview, that's Pierce Brown revving it up around Washougal. Now we say the dirt sure looks nice, a little slippery, but it looks awesome. All right, there it is. Thanks to GoPro, thanks to Pierce Brown. All right, let's introduce third member of our broadcast team. Send it to Jason Thomas with a Fly Racing pre-race report. 2021 at Washougal proved to be a pivotal race in the chase between Jet Lawrence and Justin Cooper for the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. Now, this year, Jet Lawrence has a commanding lead, but last year, Justin Cooper came in really on his way to a championship and had a late race crash here, which he suffered a nagging injury, really never recovered from until Hangtown. With Jet Lawrence having a big lead here today, will today prove to be a pivotal race, or will he extend that points lead maybe out of the grips of, uh, of Hunter Lawrence moving forward? Yeah, thanks, JT. So Justin Cooper has been good this year, but not quite on his 2021 form. He's just looking for his first win of the year now, whereas last year he was coming in trying to close in on a championship, but then he crashed and actually broke his thumb, and that was uh, obviously costly in the points. Let's get the keys to the moto here for 2022. Ryan Villapoto, what do the riders need to work on? Well, obviously, number one thing, a really good start, but we're really going to have to watch out for the shadows and the wet spots out here. If they're going to put a little water down, which I've seen them watering the start gate, so I presume they watered the track. So these guys, they just had their sight lap, so they know what's coming, but it's way different at a race pace. So those are the two keys to the moment, uh, moto. Shout out to our FMF Privateer Power Award winner. This kid has been strong all year, Derek Kelly, and the rapidly uh, growing in scope AEO Power Sports KTM team. They've really stepped up the game this year. So congrats out to Kelly, who has been well inside the points paying positions in several motos this year. We'll see how the number 74 does today. Uh, Fly Racing 32nd card is up. So we are ready to go racing 30 minutes and two laps. 40 riders on the gate. Justin Cooper was your fast qualifier today. Jet and Hunter Lawrence, second and third quickest. Seth Hamaker in his first visit to this track was fourth fastest in qualifying. Kind of curious, the gate spot, uh, Jet there going way wide. Yeah, you got Hunter right next to the doghouse on the inside, and you got Jet, uh, what, five from the uh, box on the outside. A little wide, but we'll see why he chose that. I don't know. Let's find out. Revs are up. Gates down. Good jump by Jet. Hunter. 
Hunter, that inside line is going to work. Is that Shimoda with him? As we go to the Motosport.com whole shot line, Joe Shimoda switched to the starting blocks, the middle blocks under his boots last week, and it has worked again. It looks like we're going to keep those for the rest of the series. <laughs> yeah. Two good starts back to back. And he's got both Lawrence's right there. Chet making some moves early, and suddenly he is up to third and battling his brother, Hamaker, onto the middle of them, trying to get back around as we jump back into view of the fans. Yeah, we're coming down to a pretty iconic section, coming down this downhill into the S turns here. It gets a little bit one line down here, but we're going to see it opens back up once you come through the mid middle of the track. Listen to the crowd as Jet already looking for running room against his brother Hunter. There's Hamaker and Justin Cooper battling it out with Pierce Brown next. So Cooper, a decent start. But how about this? Shibota not only the whole shot, but already a couple of bike lengths. Yeah, I think with, with Joe's riding style, the, how well he's been riding the last few races, this could be a really good moto for him. With this track the way it is, it's a little bit slippery, like we've all been saying over and over. But his riding style is really going to suit him today, I believe. Yeah, you talk about that he's not a guy that uh, goes over the limit, goes over the edge. That helps on this track? Yeah, I think so. you got to ride this track with some finesse, but you got to try to get every bit of speed and traction out of it a a if you can. So, And they got Hunter pulling up. Oh, lost oh, a foot there. Yeah, going yep. outside. But he's putting, a pr putting pressure on Joe right now. Look, he's on the inside RV trying to make the move already. Crisscrossing lines as we head to the very famous whoop section near the finish line. Shimoda holding off Hunter. One lap complete, and we got a heck of a race on our hands. Yeah, it's really close. Coming down in here, this little bit, a couple different line choices here from Hunter on the outside, setting up on the inside. Joe just railing the outside. Yeah, they're crisscrossing again, and then they got Jet right there. Hamaker, Cooper, no change in the order. Yeah, I think what we're seeing right now, Joe's on, uh, he's riding a lot of outsides right now, and we'll see if those outsides end up blowing out. They'll have to transition to the insides, and we'll see who can do that sooner than later. Okay, we'll see how long those lines last. They're going to head toward the mechanics area here and go back up Horsepower Hill after this next corner. Now, Shimoda, the starts have been a weakness his entire pro career. If he has them solved, like it looks like he might, this could change everything. He could win today. Yeah, very much. Like I said, it's uh, he's riding, been riding really well, and from looking at him right now, he's got the speed. He's able to... Um, you know, pulled back away from Hunter. Hunter was able to close in that first yep. lap, and then now it looks like it's got another, what's he have, about a second on, on yep. Hunter. So uh, riding really well. All right. Joe, the young rider out of Japan, actually got on this team as a late entry. I think they added a fifth bike to the team last year, and he really impressed. Nice little line there. Yeah, much different lines there. Joe was able to s cut back really hard to the right and then go up the inside of that hill, and you've seen Hunter go a little bit wide and have to go wide. So it's just multiple different line options here. Do more lines open up as the race goes on, or do they tend to find the good line and funnel to together? To be honest, at Washougal, you're trying to stay out of the roost because oh, it's okay. like bullets when it hits you. It's, it, <laughs> it really is. It hurts. It, and some of these guys are wearing chest protectors. Some don't. But it's really trying to avoid getting pelted by the roost. So you will sometimes take what might not be the best line. Just to get out of it, keep your goggles clean. You only have so many tear-offs. Um, so okay. you, you have to manage you know, manage the bike, manage the race, manage your goggles. So there's, there is some science to it. So we'll see if these riders can break away. They have not, actually. Hamaker hanging tough in fourth. These are the three that have won the motos. They are the top three in the series standings. Now it looks like Chet starting to close a little bit on Hunter. So we go back toward the whoops. Hunter, a little bit closer to the line that Shimoda used this time. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how, if that inside comes into play later in the moto. Hamaker putting some pressure on Jet here for third. Impressive, so we've got two Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki's sandwiching the Honda HRC teammates. Looks like Hunter's starting to put in a little bit of pressure on Joe here. Let's see if he can make the move quick and get oh. a break. Tight inside line there from Hunter, and it might work. Can he hold it all the way around in the sweeping left-hander? Joe's able to beat him to the spot, hold him off. And they're edging away a little bit from Jet right now. He's got his hands full with Hamaker. Yeah, these two up front are actually riding really well right now, pulling away from Jet, which is a little surprising. Is it a little easier for Hunter now to go on the attack without having Jet right on him? For sure, with not yep. having to worry about having his brother behind him, or any rider for that matter, yep. behind him and watching his insides. He's able to, you know, get take different lines, get out of Joe's roost, and, and not have to worry about somebody sticking a wheel in underneath of him. It's horsepower hill to the top, now to the bottom. Some rollers back here, and they'll jump back into view of the fans. Every time you think Hunter has something dialed, 
Uh, There's different line choices, and it works at this time in Shimoda's favor. Yeah, and Joe just keeps pulling out. It's like a yo-yo right now, yeah. cat and mouse. Uh, the fans loving this, yeah, anticipating. You know it's going to get tight at some point. And certainly don't count out the third place rider here, Jet Lawrence, your series points leader either. You just deal with some brief pressure from Hamaker. Where is Cooper? They are pulling away just a bit from Cooper, who's in fifth. Then it was Brown. And Derek Kelly, we mentioned the privateer, the AEO Power Sports Machine, doing it again. Got the KTM at seventh. Mumford Dillard Schwartz back from an arm injury is ninth. And RJ Hampshire, tenth on the Rockstar Husqvarna. Back to the back. These floater jumps here. Yeah, I think we're. And I think we're going to send it down to the mechanics area. Yep, send it down to Jason Thomas. So I'm down here with Johnny O'Mara. Now, Hunter Lawrence has had a rough couple of weeks. We know that. He's, he's lost some points to his brother, Jet. I just was curious, like, what's the talk during the week trying to get Hunter's mind right and back into this championship fight so he can make a run down the, down the stretch here? Uh, it's nothing really than um, getting him a little bit more comfortable on the bike. Kind of lost, lost sight of that a little bit. Made a couple of adjustments maybe in the wrong direction. And we paid the price where maybe it hurt us for Formula Auto. So, uh, you know, the team's strong around him, and we just rallied and got him really comfortable this week. So looking good so far. Yeah, both of these guys have a, a multi-time champion in their corner, so it should be a fun race to the finish here. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. Johnny O won this championship back in the 1980s for Team Honda, working with both brothers. And they do say just because Jet's a little taller than Hunter, they cannot run the exact same bike setup. So what works for one might not work for the other. No, and that's like just having a team, like Mitch, for example, having four riders, Honda having Jet and Hunter being brothers, similar riding styles. Not, you're not going to run everything exactly the same. Somebody's going to want a little bit different shock or fork or I... I you know, want my bike to do this, or a Jet wants his to do that. So they're never going to be exactly the same. Hunter, a little attack on Shimoda, as he usually does right before that mechanics area. Then Shimoda edging away as they get toward Horsepower Hill again. Yeah, Hunter's got, like, the front part of the track. Seems like he's got something figured out, able to, to close in on, on Joe. And then Joe's able to pull up, pull away from Hunter at the, on the back side of the track. And they jump back down. And I see the sun peeking through now, so uh -oh. now the shadows are going to come into play. The, the more the sun comes out, the shadows are really going to uh, play a factor um, with these guys' eyes, especially in Moto2, not to mention it's going to dry the track out, so they're going to have to water it. So there's going to be a lot of factors that come into play here as this Moto goes on into, into Moto2s. Are you surprised a little bit, Ryan? They've edged away. Uh, from Jet right now. Is that surprising you know, it's too early to say that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's early. You know, okay. it's, it's hard. We always talk about Jet being young, but he's actually a um, very mature rider for his age. You know, right now, I couldn't tell you if he's kind of sitting back watching, yep. um, letting the race come to him, or if these guys are just that much better than him right now. Um, if I had to guess, I would say he's kind of waiting. It's a waiting game for him right now. Just close enough to see the leaders, Hunter and Shimoda, as we go through only nine laps into this moto, so there is a long way to go. I got to give credit to Hamaker. He's still keeping this group in sight. That is impressive for the rookie who has not been to this track before. Hamaker has been impressive this year. Send it back down to JT with more on Jet Lawrence. You know, you guys were discussing whether Jet was kind of waiting or if this was just the, you know, the most pace that he could muster. And really, if you look through the season, he's been the master, you know, strategic guy through this whole series. Every single time someone has taken him deep into the sweat, you know, deep into the pool, he's come out on top. So to me, it looks like he's just waiting, watching these guys' lines, letting them burn themselves up a little bit, and he'll make a run later in the race. Thanks, JT. And Jet says this is his least favorite track. And he said, I don't know if I'll have the speed there. I, I got to rely on starts and fitness. They are edging away from him. It's 3.2 seconds, the gap between Shimoda and Jet in third. So it might be a private duel, at least for now, between Hunter Lawrence and Shimoda. Hamaker still hanging tough. There's Jet. Yeah, I think what we're going to see here is, is uh, as I'm watching, the track isn't very rough. What we're going to see is the square edge start to come out. Um, right now, being the track's not very rough, everybody can kind of go the speed they want to go. So as the traction goes away, as the track gets rougher, I think that's when you really see the separation. And no change up front. Looked like Hunter was making a run. Shimoda's got him held. So it's still about a second. And Hamaker still doing a good job there in fourth, keeping Jet 
at least in sight. But look at the distance. They've pulled about four seconds on Justin Cooper. Yeah, they, they definitely have uh, started to walk away from, from Justin. Not what we expected. Fast in qualifying. He's always quick uh, in qualifying, uh, but you usually expect a little bit more in the motos. Looks like Hunter's about as close as he has been through this section. Yeah, you know what? He's starting to, he's, he's riding inside lines, and I think that's shortening the track. Um, and maybe some of those lines are a little bit smoother because oh, oh, there's the move right there. Use the insides and set up the outside, and just like that to the lead. Great pass by Hunter. Chet going up the inside into the whoops. Oh, Shimoda! Pushed oh, off the track. How's that going to turn out? So Hunter maintains the lead. There was no room there, so he goes off the track, holds on. I think the argument there for Honda would be he led going in and he led going out. He didn't gain. Yeah, I think that was he jumped back on the track right away. Um, if 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 I'm you know refing this, I would say that was that was okay. Okay, so now the question is, is Hunter going to be able to sprint away from Shimoda and the rest of the field right now? That's a quick strike. That was a quick move, and if, it, now now Jet has to make a quick move. He's got to bridge the gap to Joe and then make the pass, which is bridging the gap is going to be the easy part. Now making the pass is going to be the hard part because it is one-lined. All right, if there is strategy at play for Jet, it's going to change in a hurry because Hunter Lawrence is taking the lead, and here's how he did it. Yeah, just going to the outside there. Jet, or, uh, Joe's been going to the inside, but the low line on the outside there really kept uh, Hunter a bit lower and was able to get him up next to him, which set him up on the inside coming to that controlled the turn. There he goes up. Jet or uh, Joe coming up, just pushing him wide, taking the line away, but Hunter was able to just squeak back on the track as soon as possible and hold that line and hold the lead. So now we're going to watch the gap. Bind the gap, as they would say, in the UK. And look, he is trying to sprint away from Shimoda. Shimoda's got to keep him in sight. And if Jet's going to go with him, he's got to do it now. Because you know Hunter's going to be throwing some heat up front. Now that he has clear air. Joe made a good regroup right after that. He was able to, um, you know, figure himself back out, get get his, his mind right. And he's actually, I think, closed back up in since he was gotten, had gotten past. Pretty interesting to see Shimoda get the good start again. He got a good start second moto last week and said he used starting blocks for the first time. Those are metal platforms under his boots. They asked him, had you ever practiced that? And he said, no. But Mitch Payton, team owner, said, do something different. So let's try a block. So that's what they did. And you know they're going to stick with that now. Clearly, yes, he's had some really good starts now that he's using those starting blocks. And not sure exactly why, what the what the difference is. What's, is he more comfortable with those? Um, but it's really good now. Hunter's able to ride away. Jet's closing in. Yep. Um, you know, if Joe could stick with Hunter a little bit longer, he might be able to see his lines, learn something from him, figure out where he's going slower. Um, but right now he's getting a little detached from him, and he's got pressure from Jet now. Is there a beta motorcycle shot through these corners here? Some very famous sections where we've seen a lot of passing after the finish line. Jet is starting to close in on Joe. So we have a battle for second as Hunter tries to get away. Yeah, Joe's just riding a lot of these outsides, and I think it worked those first few laps. I know we're, um, you know, they're great those first few laps, but now if you start watching, Jet's taking more of the insides. He's, he's able to shorten the track, close up and up on him, and he's not also in the same line. So when he does bridge that gap, he'll be able to make a pounce and on, a pounce right on him and make a pass. Oh, that's what Hunter did. As soon as he got there, yep, he had the opening. So let's and you see have Jet to make quick it. work. If you get stuck behind these guys, Hunter's just going to end up riding away from from these guys, and then Jet's going to have to bridge that gap once he does pass Joe. It is starting to build to a concerning level of lead. Three seconds between Hunter Lawrence and Shimoda, and almost four seconds back to Jet here in third. So this is a critical juncture. If Shimoda or Jet are going to challenge Hunter Lawrence, they've got to go. He is beginning to edge away. Jet's got to be, you know, uh, smart about this. He has a has a, a decent size, size points lead right now. Um, obviously, this is motocross. Anything can happen from bike issues to tip overs, um, like we've already seen with Jet. Yep. Um, but right now, he's just playing it smart. You know, like he's he's riding in third. He's got that points lead on his brother. Um, so it's just being consistent and, and managing the motorcycle right now. We're we're coming down to the home stretch of the series. So um, you know, having a, a big issue would be catastrophic right now. Send it back down to Jason Thomas. You know, these guys are so perceptive mid-race, and you can see Hunter put in the best lap of the race the last lap, and you see Jet responding with some intensity here because every action has a reaction from the other rider. So 
Jet can obviously see Hunter trying to disappear, and it's just a yo-yo effect between these two, and nobody wants to let the other guy get out of sight. <laughs> You know, Hunter uh, explained it last week, the brothers, he said it's like the movie Jurassic Park where the Velociraptor learns with each battle. He's like, when I do something, Jet learns from that, then I do something, Jet learns from that, then I learn from him, he learns from me, and they just keep getting closer and closer. They cannot pull away from each other. We're halfway through this moto. 15 minutes down, 15 minutes to go. You can save 15% or more on your motorcycle insurance with a quick 15-minute phone call to Geico. Right now, Joe Shimoda needs a policy because he has Jet Lawrence all over him trying to get by as Hunter is looking to make a breakaway. Has to deal with some lap traffic now for the first time in this moto. Yeah, Hunter's riding really well right now. Riding the motorcycle well, he's got good lines. Um, like I talked earlier, the, they, they both ride the motorcycle so well. We're coming into the braking bumps, getting off the brakes early so the bike isn't bound up. Um, and it doesn't make you as physically tired, and you're able to go faster. Back to the top of Horsepower Hill. Jet trying to get Joe. Good friends off the track, big battle on it. Jet's using the inside, is it enough? Shimoda's able to beat him to it. Nice try by Jet on the inside. Shimoda rebounds to the outside. Now Jet's getting creative. He's all over this track looking for an opening, inside, outside. Side by side down the hill, into the S turns. How will Jet play it? Ah, the outside doesn't come together yet. Joe holds him off. Yeah, it gets one line down into those S turns. So you, you kind of, you, you, you want to make the pass, but really you should be following through there just so you don't lose any ground and make the pass where you, where you know you can. High speed up here, a little bit of sand on this landing. Then we'll hit these floater jumps at the top. And as they begin to battle, Hunter brings the lead back over three seconds. We're going to jump downhill. New section of the track after this. They've revised this section here. Yeah, a little new, like a uh, little horseshoe section, chicane in here. What's really impressive is Joe right now being able to fend off uh, Jet. Uh, yep. He's tried a couple times to make the pass. They're yo-yoing a little bit right now. Hunt, uh, Joe Joe's able to pull away a little bit from, from Jet right now. So uh, very impressive ride. Oh, and a lap traffic. Oh, oh missed timing there of the whoops. 12 minutes and two laps to go in this one. And they've pulled away from Hamaker. You can tell Jet has turned it up. Turned up the Jets, I guess I could say, to try to get Joe. They pulled away a little bit from fourth place Hamaker, but he cannot figure out a way around, and now there's lap traffic all over the place. Which may open up an opportunity for, for a mistake from Joe and, and make it uh, easy for, for Jet to get by. Back to Hunter Lawrence, who led the majority of Moto 1 last week. In Minnesota, they made a mistake. Jet got him. He got Jet back. Then he made a bad choice in the lines and lap traffic. And Jet was able to make the decisive pass. This time, Hunter wants to finish it off. Down to the inside again, just like they were one lap ago. Jet attacking Joe, side by side. This is Horsepower Hill. Actually, Joe's got a few more bike lengths to the good than he did one lap ago. Here they were completely side by side last time. So yeah, Joe's fighting them all. Yeah, Joe's got an outside line that comes up before Howard Horsepower Hill, which yes, it's a wider turn, but he's able to uh, get a little more run up the hill and speed. Back down into these S turns. And Jed does choose to follow. Entered on the outside, but followed him in. Yeah, that now look at like lap before he was he lost um, you know half a second there. Now he's still on him. He's now he's got an uh, opportunity to make a pass where the track is a bit wider and faster, and maybe where he's a little bit better. Okay, let's see. Does he have a spot picked out? Huge leap into the sand by Shimoda. If he's close coming up into this new section where Hunter ended up passing Joe, I could see that happening again. Yeah, if you're Joe. He can you enter there on the outside like Hunter used, or is that too risky if you're if you're the lead rider to enter on the outside? I mean, we're always taught to protect our inside. Yeah. But, um, He's going to do it. Yep. He goes to the outside. That was risky. I guess he remembered he got past there. Exactly, yeah. So it's, you know, you're supposed to protect the inside, but obviously he ended up getting past on the outside. So, um, you know, just being smart and, and being creative with lines. Is that on purpose what Joe is doing here in the whoops, or is he mistiming that? I think there's time? a really deep hole okay. on that last the, that last triple out and where they're landing, and it's it, it's 
it's you can't set the motorcycle up for it per se just for that one that deep spot so they're probably bottoming the forks there takes a lot to do it with these factory race bikes that must be a pretty big hit as they negotiate barely the lap traffic here and just relentless pressure being applied on Joe Shimoda but hanging tough and now they're only down to 1.9 seconds they're actually catching oh. Hunter so now I want to see yeah they're doing their best work Shimoda's best lap 214.8 he just ran a 214.9 but it was Hunter who went back to a 215.5 so Hunter had a bad lap and this is their chance to get back in it yeah, maybe a mistake by Hunter, but pretty soon we're going to have a three-way battle. Ah, that would be heartbreaking if Hunter has another first moto that he appears to have control of, only for Jet to get back in it. That's exactly what happened last week. So we will see here the next couple of laps how this plays out, setting us up for the stretch drive. We have seen some great racing this year. I mean, Jed has won all but one race overall, but the action has been this close every week. Yes, it has. It's been phenomenal watching. As a fan, I mean, look at the crowd we have here at Washougal. Yeah. It's a packed house. Um, perfect weather. Everybody's out to short sleeve shirts and, 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 and shorts, and, and they're not hot. So as for riding conditions for these guys, couldn't, be, couldn't ask for anything better. You know, that might be part of the reason the racing has been so good as well. There, there's no worry about fitness, endurance, holding back. These guys are able to go to the wall every time. It's about, what, 70 degrees today? Yes, yeah, it's, it's nice and cool out. You know, that's a big factor is when you get heat. When you see those those numbers going up, you know, above 90, the humidity is really high. Um, that really takes a toll on your body. And Joe Shimoda still using the outside in the entrance to that right-hander, holding Jet Lawrence at bay. But, yeah, they have absolutely closed up on Hunter. They've got him back in sight now and still eight minutes and two laps, so plenty of time left in this moto any one of these three could win it still another 215 from hunter lawrence his best was a 214.2 he just ran a 215.6 so not quite on the pace that he had earlier in this one and that has allowed shimoda to claw his way back into it and it's really fun to have these three battling they were teammates when they were young on the old Geico Honda team, which is no longer here. But they really got to know each other well, and they are a hilarious trio when you get them on the podium or in the press conferences. It's pretty impressive how hard they've been battling that they're this friendly off the track. Yeah, you know, they have a they have a good, uh, call it working relationship, yeah. um, all three of them. Uh, so it's really cool to see that they're able to race really hard on the track and, and also be friends off the track, which is, which is really hard to do when you're the top three guys in one class. Well, we were talking about this midweek. We, we keep thinking tensions are going to rise with championship fight between the Lawrence brothers. Uh, but I've seen you go through it. You, you battled Ben Talney all year as teammates, and we kept waiting. And it never really turned into anything bad off the track. Yeah, you know, and I think a lot of that was was uh, Mitch's Mitch's doing, keeping everything really cool, and we would race really hard off. Oh, the, nice yeah, try by the Jet. Inside. Yep, tried it, uh, but it's possible. It is possible, <laughs> and they're da Dazzy, their dad. You know, I I, I know him um, a little bit. Awesome dude. Um, uh, he would whoop them into shape if okay. they, uh, if they <laughs> had any issues, I believe. Okay, so it's not going to get disrespectful between these three, but on the track, you can see Jet is pouring it on. Even trot a pass attempt in an area you don't always see passes in those S turns. Look at this. They are right there with Hunter Lawrence now. Three rider battle for the lead at Washougal. Great stuff. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Joe's sandwiched in the middle. Yep. Hunter's going to have to protect his insides. And oh! Yeah, Jet had an opening. No, that inside, inside just does not work. Yeah, they end up coming off. They have a high line on the inside there. So it's, it, you might have a shorter distance, but they end up catching more air, and it's, it's, it evens itself out. Through the whoops. Another lap clicks off. Let's see the times. Almost identical. 215 flats for first Jet and second. Jet up the inside. Ugh, just a little too rough to get it stopped down there. Yeah, you pinch that turn off when you run down the inside there. So if you got when you're if you're gonna make a pass there, you have to be right on the dude that's right in front of you coming leaving the whoops. So Jet Lawrence, fastest rider on track, only one with a 214 lap time last time around. And he can now see not only Shimoda, but his brother Hunter. So he's not out of it to win this moto. Again, it would be heartbreaking if he pulls it out late like he did last week, if he does it two weeks in a row. 
Oh, it is on right now. All three riders in the same section of the track. Shimoda's a little wide. Almost came together with Jet. Now, Jet's been up the left side of Horsepower Hill several times. Is he close enough to make it work? Oh. Shimoda cuts the line off. Takes the inside away from him. I want to see if the bottom of the S turns here, the bottom of the downhill, if, if Hunter or uh, Jet's been taking a middle line, I wonder if it's going to pan out for him. Yeah, he got close last time. Yep. There'll be another S turn coming up. Oh, uh, Jet side by side down the hill. Here it comes. Can he beat him to the spot? Not quite. Now watch this right hander. Joe covered it. Good job by Joe. Kind of learning. Yeah, Eyes really, in the back of his head. Yeah, really tough section there. There's there's multiple lines, and some of sometimes there you don't know which is faster. But we have seen a couple of attempts by Jet, and then Joe has responded and changed the line, just with instinct there. So he did it. Held him off in that section. Uh, let's see if Jet has another area. Oh, Jet absolutely sent it to that left-hander, but then there was a lap rider in the way. Couldn't really use any of that speed. Nope. Jet's still trying that inside. Making that Honda as low as he can get it over that jump. And this Shimoda's back on the rear wheel of Hunter. Yes, he is. Yeah, he's closing in. See if he can make a pass here soon. Because if he could get past Hunter, then the brothers have to duel it out. Yeah, and that could be Joe's chance to break away. This is phenomenal racing as advertised. This is what the people here in Washington State have been watching on TV all year. And the race comes to their town. And these three are going at it again. Fantastic action. Yeah, they're pushing the limits right now, all three of these guys. And this is not an easy track to push that limit. It's an uncomfortable place to, to try to ride fast. Um, you know, the ruts aren't always awesome. It's a little bit slippery. The roost hurts. So you're always searching for a different line or to get out of the roost. Um, so this is exciting. Joe Shimoda has caught the leader, Hunter Lawrence. They're headed uphill. And he has to deal with Jet Lawrence as well. It's exactly the way you want it. Three riders, they've been the top three in the series. And they are an equal match for each other today. You just wonder which direction is this going to go? Everybody going wide at the base. With two minutes and 25 seconds left, you know, I think um, Hunter's in a really good position right now. It's getting a little late. Well, I think it seems like it's stabilized a little bit. Mm -hmm. Hunter or Jet's been able to run up on Jet, uh, Joe, um, but Joe always capitalizes and is able to f fend um, Hunter, uh, Jet, Jet off. <laughs> Man, I get their names always. <laughs> I mixed mean, we up. got Jet, Joe, we got yes. two Lawrences. It's, it's not easy. I'll, I'll cut you a little slack on this as we head back to the top of this facility, the triple, and then the sand jump. Joe has something there. He's able to just get a few bike lengths on Jet every time before we get to this jump. And then Jet just phenomenal through this corner. That was unbelievable. Yeah, his mid-corner speed is, is phenomenal. It's really fast. Uh, can he make this inside work? We have lappers yep. coming up in front of us. Going to try the inside again in this right-hander. Just nothing you can make happen there. Oh, man, there are lappers everywhere. As you mentioned, Jet Going down to the inside. Going to stand him up. Pulled the same movie, pulled on Hunter. How about that? So Jet Lawrence just drove to the inside, stopped, got in front of Shimoda. No contact, not a dirty move, but it gets the job done. Let's see if uh, Shimoda can regroup and put another charge in and, and run it up on Jet. Now the big beneficiary there was Hunter Lawrence because that was not the fast line by Hunter. That was, or sorry, by Jet. It's just what he needed to do to make the pass. Yep, was able Hunter to, to pull away. Yes, was able to open it back up to 2.8. All right, here it is, folks. We're going to be two laps to go. I've been watching this battle the whole time. we got to get one break in. We're going to see if Jet can track down Hunter. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com. Make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast.
It is on right now. Hunter Lawrence against Jet. Hunter leading the way just like he was a week ago. Jet was able to get by him. Two to go here at Washougal. Jet's going to have to make a run here really soon because Hunter is riding well and we're closing down to with a lap to go. Well, yeah, a lap and a half to go. Yep. ETS Racing Fuels giving you the shot here as we head up Horsepower Hill. Gap is stabilized. It was 1.8 when Jet got the second. It has stayed there. Last time around, Jet a little bit quicker now to close it back in. So it actually had stayed and it pulled back out. Does Jet have another run in him? Yeah, Hunter. Hunter's just riding really well right now. His his line selections uh, really good. The way he's riding the motorcycle, calm, Whoa. cool, collected. Little sideways off yeah. off the downhill there. It's really it, that section's a little tech. You come in there so fast and you try to get on the brakes, but then you have to let them off before you get into the bumps because you don't want to ride off that and hang the rear wheel off of it and end up you know being nose heavy coming off of it. So. It's uh, it, when the shadows come into play there. It's even worse in, in late motos because the braking bumps come all the way to the edge of that uh, that drop off. So you do have to brake a little bit at the top. Yeah, you can't so you, just hammer. You brake and then you let off the brake so the bike's free when it jumps yes. off of it. So you don't end up, you know, uh, I guess uh, teeter tying off of it, yep. and dropping the front end in the wrong spot. But uh, you cannot just go wide open. You have no, to slow you down. You will end up in the crowd. You go. You can go that far. <laughs> I mean, you will go to flat. Yes. <laughs> I see. Hey, Hunter has done a phenomenal job here. He's actually stretched it back out. Yep, 2.7 seconds. We've got a couple lap riders in front of us right now, in front of Hunter. Um, but I think he's in control. White flag is out. Just like Moto 1 a week ago, it's these three in the top three. This will be the fifth Moto this year that it'll be both Lawrence's and Shimoda on the podium together. The difference is the order. Jet was able to get to Hunter last time out. This time, Hunter's trying to prevent it from happening, and honestly, every time we check the stopwatch, Hunter's pulling away further and further. Three seconds now. This could be it. You know, I think Jet's probably sitting back, um, knowing that this track is very hard to pass on. He's going to settle for second and try to regroup, come back out and get that uh, second moto win for the overall. But a little bit of momentum back with Hunter Lawrence, if he can do this. And the, the big one-on-one -on -one showdowns we have seen, we had a second moto battle at High Point and a first moto battle last week. They both ended up going to Jet. But unless something changes in a hurry here, Hunter will have the edge this time. Now Jet has admitted this is his least favorite track on the circuit. He's ridden well, but not as well as Hunter, who's marching away here in the last lap. This is big for the 96, not giving up on it. Anything can happen. As we've already seen, Jet had a had a motor issue yep. um, earlier in the season. Uh, was down 26 points, right up like snap of the fingers, and uh, Hunter was in the lead, and now it's it's flip flopped again. So Hunter's just got to keep plugging away and doing the things he can do, like he's doing right now. He's riding phenomenal. Um, he's got about a quarter a, a quarter of a lap left before he uh, rounds out this first moto for the win. And the fans saluting this effort. Hunter Lawrence had to overcome Joe Shimoda, deal with pressure from Shimoda for most of it. Down the stretch, we thought Jet would put in a run. Hunter was able to respond. He just ran a 2.15.1 last time around. 2.16.5 for Jet. So he was a second and a half quicker, leading to the white flag, and that makes all the difference. He's come close to beating his brother in a one-on-one -on -one fight several times this year. But this time, he's going to get it done all the way to the line. Good bounce back. Yeah, it's great going into, into second moto with the upper hand. Um, road phenomenal. Now it's, uh, it's the ball's in his court. Now Hunter Lawrence, the first moto win over Jet. There is Shimoda, who led some laps. Will end up third down 8.2 seconds. And Hunter Lawrence has it. Yeah, Jet didn't, or um, Shimoda didn't look too excited pulling off the track there <laughs> and shaking his head you know he probably knew that he had uh, had that race but ended up you know not working out for him seventh career moto win for hunter lawrence and third moto win of the season kind of surprising to see cooper this far back your fast qualifier 37 seconds down at the line 
He did get Hamaker, though. Hamaker spent a lot of this moto in fourth. He will end up uh, fifth as he gets the checkered flag within his sights. And Hunter Lawrence getting to celebrate. That is a big one here at Washougal, not giving up on the pursuit of his younger brother, Jet. And gets the points, by the way, back within a moto. He's down 27 coming in. So move it to 24. It's still a long way to go in this championship. The Lawrence brothers are 1-2 again. That's how they started this season. Other riders have taken their swings at it. No one has been able to take the momentum away from them. It has been as dominant as we have ever seen two brothers in this championship and really to see two teammates be this good. Pretty impressive what they've engineered over there, the Lawrence family and with Team Honda. Stay with us from Washougal. We'll talk to Hunter about a big moto win. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. With a nationwide network of parts and care, Napa helps you get up and go. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. Big crowds all year this year. And amongst the crowd, wow, making a quick trip. Colby Raha just won gold at X Games in the Moto X quarter pipe, but he's up here hanging out. That's right, 49 feet. Jeez. Let's get to the Lucas Oil race recap, this first 250 moto. Joe Shimoda, the whole shot in the Kawasaki. Hunter Lawrence, a nice move here. Yeah, just out around the outside, was able to control the inside on this next turn, and it was it was uh, Hunter from all the way out. And then Joe tried to get it back on the inside before the whoops. Hunter goes off the track but maintains the lead. I think they'll say that's okay. And then from there, it was Jet's turn to put some pressure. Jet Lawrence on Shimoda, here's the pass. Put the same move on that he did to his brother. Just stood him up. Down to the inside. So that puts Jet into second, but not enough to overcome Hunter, who actually pulled away in the final two and a half laps and goes on to win it by four seconds. So a big win there from Hunter Lawrence. Third moto win of the season for him. And we'll send it down to the podium. Jet Lawrence for Jason Thomas. Hunter Lawrence, your first moto winner. If you're looking for a way to claw back into this series, that's a good first step. Uh, yeah, you can't pull points back if you're getting beat. So <laughs> we got a really good start, and it was a little slippery. Uh, more so than normal, they put some water down. Um, but no, happy. Just looking forward to the second moto now. So I was wondering a little bit, like just past halfway, your lap time slipped to like mid-215s. That allowed Joe Shimoda and your brother to kind of you know, crawl back up to you. Was that something you were conscious of in Moto? What, what was happening there? Um, yeah, I think it was just making a few little minor mistakes and just a few little things and just tried cleaning them up and then um, just really flowing for the last, uh, you know, maybe 10, 10, 15 minutes and uh, try to do it, try to do that speed a little easier. Well, points leads down to 24, so tease them up for Moto 2. Thanks, JT, and that is within one Moto's reach of points. Get 25 for a race win. Jet there finishes second, Shimoda third. Justin Cooper overcomes Seth Hamaker late, take over fourth. Pierce Brown, I believe that's the season best in sixth. And Josh Farisi, I think that's the season best uh, for him in the AEO KTM, finishing up in uh, the number 10 spot. Carson Mumford on the Suzuki, 11th. Derek Kelly, solid 12th, just outside points paying positions. Tommy Rios, and we'll give you the full field here, 40 riders competing today. All right, we'll go down to the podium, get the other side of the Lawrence Brothers story. Here's Jason Thomas. Jet Lawrence, runner-up in that first moto. Seemed like it took you a little bit too long to get around Shimoda, and then I saw you get up to your brother, and then you were looking around a little bit. Did you just feel like he was a little bit too far gone with a couple laps to go? Uh, yeah, obviously, I spent most moto behind both of them. Both of them. Uh, it took me a while to get around Joe. This track's just such a one-line track. I mean, it's, that's why I'm not, not much of a fan of it, just because it's so hard to pass. It's a... You're just eating roosters the whole time. So I had to cop a lot of roosters to get around Joe. And then once we got on the second, it was two laps to go. I'm like, oh, it took me all motor to get around Joe. So to try and get around Hunter and two laps, I think it's going to be a bit difficult. I'm like, you know what? He can have this one. I'll just uh, try and just get these two uh, breather laps and then try and get the start to recover for the next moment. Hopefully we can get a better start and then go from there. Well, a 2-1 still gets the overall and most importantly keeps the points the same. 
And that will be the goal, JT, for Lawrence in Moto2 to get that 2-1 overall victory. Let's show you how the race started, the Motosport.com whole shot replay. Ends up being Joe Shimoda getting it. Yeah, got a great jump off the line. We talked about those starting blocks, something new for him from last weekend. Two whole shots, uh, two weekends in a row. Yep, back to back for Joe. And that is huge on a track that at least Jet Lawrence thinks is difficult to pass on. And he would put the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki on the podium in third. He has been pretty familiar with podium real estate as of late, the rider out of Japan. Send it back down to JT. Joe Shimoda, what's the deal? Good starts, good finishes? It's really all coming together here for you uh, midway point in the season. Uh, yeah, just uh, I'm just trying my best every weekend. And uh, yeah, this, this time I used the starting blocks and I think I might, might figure it out. Uh, who knows, but. Um, we got another Moto to go, uh, race hard, and uh, let's see what happens. Well, he's missing his, uh, his coach, Nick Way, this weekend, but it doesn't seem like the results are affected as of yet. That's right, Nick. His two sons are going to be racing the Monster Energy Amateur National at Loretta Lynn, so they're already down there setting up, but clearly whatever he's told him has worked. Joe has had another good moto there, working with Eddie, who uh, works for Kawasaki after the podium. Hey, tonight, keep on watching here on Mav TV. We'll have the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series here on a Saturday night. Silver Dollar Nationals from I 80 Speedways. Mav TV Motorsports Network, slinging dirt afternoon through night. Good times here at Washougal. Just about 20 minutes outside of Portland, Oregon. Big, big crowd on hand. To motorsport.com upcoming schedule. We'll have two weekends off. Industry heads to Loretta Lynn for the big amateur national, and then a four race stretch run Unadilla in New York, Bud's Creek, Maryland, Ironman, Indiana, and Fox Raceway in California will be the final four rounds in the season. Probably get a lot of talent back in the series. A lot of riders coming back from injury at Unadilla. Likes allegedly our defending 450 champ Dylan Ferrandez should be back. So definitely want to keep watching the shows here on Mav as we get ready to end this 2022 season. Four. Uh, races and three motos left. <laughs> that Emig's old bike? I see a 47 yeah, Cali. Is he not? that old? Is he that old? <laughs> I don't know. That's a great Christmas tree. Okay. Maybe that's a Hammaker 47 Kawasaki. Yeah, let's put some lights on that thing. All right. So our 250 Moto 1 is complete. We are just getting the day started. 450 Moto 1 is coming up next here on Mav TV and Mav TV on Flow Racing. But for now, we're done with our first race. For Ryan Villapoto and Jason Thomas, I'm Jason Wygant. Great racing again between the brothers Lawrence and their buddy Joe Shimoda. This time it is Hunter coming out on top. Stay with us for 450 Moto 1 on MAV-TV.